जैसे मंजर सामने आने लगे हैं गाते गाते लोग चिल्लाने लगे हैं अब तो इस तालाब का पानी बदल दो ये कमल के फूल कुमलाने लगे हैं डिस्ट्रिक्ट कोर्ट्स ऑलमोस्ट फोर पॉइंट फाइव करोड़ केसेज आर पेंडिंग इन वेरियस डिस्ट्रिक्ट कोर्ट्स इन इंडिया द एवरेज टाइम इन विच अ डिसीजन इज लाइकली टू बी मेड इन अ सबॉर्डिनेट कोर्ट इज नियरली सिक्स ईयर्स सिक्स ईयर्स सर चंद्रयान रीच चंद्रयान थ्री रीच द मून इन फोर्टी डेज इट इज द विजन ऑफ द एंड द लीडरशिप ऑफ आर प्राइम मिनिस्टर श्री नरेंद्र मोदी हु हैज रिजॉल्व टू ट्रांसफॉर्म दिस आग का दरिया इन टू अ न्याय की पवित्र धारा नए दौर के नए ख्वाब हैं नए मौसमों के गुलाब हैं ये मोहब्बतों के चराग हैं इन्हें नफरतों की हवा ना दो सर इन द ईयर 1834, थर्टी फोर द फर्स्ट इंडियन लॉ कमीशन वॉज कॉन्स्टिट्यूटेड अंडर द चेयरमैनशिप ऑफ लॉर्ड मकॉली विच गिव बर्थ टू द इंडियन पीनल कोड इन एटीन सिक्सटी द इंडियन एविडेंस एक्ट वॉज इनैक्टेड इन द ईयर एटीन सेवेंटी टू विद द व्यू टू कंसॉलिडेट द लॉ रिलेटिंग टू एविडेंस द कोड ऑफ क्रिमिनल प्रोसीजर नाइनटीन सेवेंटी थ्री रेगुलेट्स द प्रोसीजर फॉर अरेस्ट इन्वेस्टिगेशन इंक्वायरी एंड ट्रायल ऑफ अफेंसिस अंडर द इंडियन पीनल कोड एंड अंडर एनी अदर लॉ गवर्निंग क्रिमिनल अफेंसिस सर दीज की प्रोविजन्स विच फॉर्म द बेसिस ऑफ द जस्टिस डिलीवरी सिस्टम इन इंडिया हैव बीन एंटीक्वेटेड इन आर एज ओल्ड वेन द ब्रिटिश केम टू इंडिया द ओरिजिनल एंड द ओनली पर्पज वॉज कॉलोनाइजेशन ऑफ द माइंड सिंस दे बिलीव दैट इफ द माइंड वॉज कॉलोनाइज दे विल नॉट लीड long standing armies to colonize the natives according to the british historian elizabeth koloski the ma- the main idea was that the british felt that the natives and the and the colonials needed different set of laws under which they were go- governed as they felt the natives were was incapable of appreciating the rule of law and hence needed stringent laws to be governed that explains the idea behind the criminal tribes and the thuggy acts which were based on the concept of hereditary criminality which the british believed was inherent in the natives present laws as they stand reeks of colonial hangover so it still reminds us of the times when the british were ruling us and they continue to rule us through these acts written by them for them these acts were formulated at a time when the population of the country was about 20 crores and the population today is seven times as compared to that the previous acts were designed to serve the crown and its officers at the cost of the indian society and resources the acts were not only exploratory in nature but far far away from any kind of justice it was a result of these inefficiencies that the criminal justice system ended up creating an atmosphere of distrust in the minds of the citizens who remain largely apprehensive of finding any justice after suffering so due to the changing nature of the society its attributes its elements the laws have become obsolete and fall short in in encompassing the overall picture of society and the needs of the prevailing system of the justice at large a need was thus felt for a long time to overall this mechanism make it more contemporary and inclusive of the existing constructs so the new proposed laws reflect of the government's intention to align the legal system with the 21st century emphasizing citizen centric legal structures digital transformation and a focus on the ju- justice rather than the punishment so the con- the context in which these acts have been introduced is very very important and while discussing these we should not miss the wood for the trees the intent is to create an ecosystem of justice delivery which is not procedural oriented but justice centric sir I would like to quote a share from Dushyant Kumar which sums up this entire scenario in a very good way to begin my speech. Kaise manzar samne aane lage hain? Kaise manzar samne aane lage hain? Gaate gaate log chillane lage hain. Ab to is talab ka pani badal do, ye kamal ke phool kumlane lage hain. Sir, many voices have been raised questioning the need for the significance of these bills. I want to substantiate my arguments. as well as the need for a total reform of the justice delivery mechanism with a few data points so at the district courts almost 4.5 crore cases are pending in various district courts in india about 1.2 crores are pending for more than 5 years about 5 lakh cases are pending for more than 25 years about 40% of these pendencies are due to the fact that either records are awaited or due to non availability of counsel 
if one finds that data worrisome, the pendency report of the high courts is even more worrisome. Almost 70 lakh cases are pending, of which 60% are pending for more than five years. The average time in which a decision is likely to be made in a subordinate court is nearly six years. Six years, sir. Chandrayaan, reached, Chandrayaan 3 reached the moon in 40 days. And if, you, if your case moves to any other higher courts, 10 years is the average time to get justice. The average number of hearings, the turnaround time between the two, he two hearings, and the caseload is extremely high. So is the cost of litigation as well as the man hours lost while attending these uh, hearings. The two combined leads to a loss of at least rupees 1 lakh crores. Moreover, the high court judges are severely under pressure. They just get on an average about five to six minutes to hear a case. Justice delayed is justice denied, sir. Sir, I would also briefly talk about the under trials. Sir, almost 78% of our 5.5 lakh prisoners are persons whose cases are being decided by the courts. This is about 55, this was about 55% in 1975. Today it's 78%. About 30% of these have been in prison for more than a year. For every 10 prisoners in India, only two have been convicted for a crime. With a yearly average conviction rate of about 40%, our justice system would have kept imprisoned over 3 lakh innocent people. We often read about reports where an under trial have been kept in prison for periods longer than the punishment itself. People have been acquitted for their cases after spending decades in prisons. And not just this, sir. The fight for justice is almost often a fight with the justice delivery system. For the, victim, for the victims, it's even more agonizing. The high cost of litigation, frequent adjournments, complexity of laws, procedural overburden, dehumanizing ecosystem, multiple agencies, corruption, judicial fatigue, and whatnot. These remedies had become more painful than the disease itself. The path to justice is like a proverbial arc ka darya. And it is the vision of the, and the leadership of our Prime Minister, Shri Narendra Modi, who has resolved to transform this arc ka darya into a nyaya ki pavitra dhara. And for that, I cannot thank him and the Honorable Home Minister enough. It is this backdrop, the introduction of the Bharatiya Nyaya Sahita, the Nagrik Suraksha Sahita, and the Saksha Sahita to replace the existing archaic laws, the IPC, CRPC, the Evidence Act, is a welcome move, sir. An idea whose time has come. So I'd like to quote John F. Kennedy, who says, change is the law of life, and those who look only on the, to the past and present are certain to miss the future. Sir, I would like to throw some light on the key provisions of these bills and how they are an improvement over the existing provisions. The Bharatiya Saksha, uh, Saksha Sahita. Sir, the Antiquated Indian Evidence Act of 1872 is an absolute solution to the problems of a bygone era. Evidently, the Act has been adapted to evolving criminal activities and locks, lacks modern criminology practices. Attempts to address this through amendments proved insufficient indicating the need for a comprehensive overhaul. The Bharatiya Saksha Bill 23 aims to streamline evidence, rules for a fair trial, sir. It omits outdated colonial references and produces fr from the 1872 Act. Sir, the proposed legislation, legislation aims to tackle issues in the current legal system, such as its complexity, high case backlog, low conviction rate, insufficient fines for crimes, overcrowded prisons, limited use of modern technology, delayed investigations, intricate hearing processes, inadequate forensic evidence utilization, and delayed justice delivery for the underprivileged. Sir, amongst the many challenges introduced in the bill, I would like to highlight two key changes. One is the removal of the British references from the bill to align the bill with the ethos of Bharat. The words like Parliament of the United Kingdom, London Gazette, Lahore, United Kingdom, or the Great Britain and Ireland her, Ma Her Majesty, by the Privy Council, Her Majesty's dominions, etc., have been deleted. Section 166, relating to the power of the jury to put question, etc., have been deleted as the jury system has already been abolished in India. The terms like lunatic, unsound mind, etc., have also been done away with. The second point I'd like to highlight is the use of technology and digital means in processing evidence. 
Sir, so to conclude your time is over. Sir, I will seek your guidance. I am the only independent representing the independence in the house. So I will seek time to complete my speech, sir. Conclude, conclude. Sir, Bharatiya Nyaya Sahita, the Bharatiya Nyaya Sahita to replace the Indian Penal Code, sir. So the, the age-old IPC, which is almost 150 years old, is plagued with a lot of shortcomings. Complex nature of this legal system, huge pendency of cases in the courts, low conviction rate, the amount of fine prescribed in the laws being very low, overcrowding of under trials prisoners in prisons, very little use of modern technology in the legal systems, delay in investigations, complicated investigations and pending hearing processes, delayed justice due to inadequate use of forensic evidence. All these led to demand for a total reform of the justice delivery system. Sir. Reports from various bodies like the Law Commission of India, Vishwanathan Committee, the Malimath Committee, proposed specific amendments to the criminal laws and broader reforms in the criminal justice system. Sir, the, sir, the BNS has been introduced as a reform and not as an incremental change. Sir, I want to come to few, few crucial point, point, provisions of the bill. The offences against women and children, murder and offences against the state have been given precedence in Sahita, which was very much required. Trans has, transgender has been defined in accordance with the Transgender Persons Protection Persons Right Act of 2019. Community service has been introduced as one of the punishments, sir. So much needed mob lynching shall be met with life imprisonment. As the instances of hit and run cases, again a very needed law, sir, are on the rise and a new provision under the clause 104.2 has been made. So, so section 124A of the IPC relating to sedation has been deleted. And the BNS 23 introduces provisions for the contemporary offenses like economic crimes, organized crimes, cyber crimes, ensuring adequate safeguards for public order, safety and India's integrity, mandated by the parliament with democratic approval, compared to the IPC and the other provisions. The Bhartiya Nagrik Suraksha Sahita. Sir, the proposed legislation seeks to repeal the CRPC 73, introducing technology and forensic science in criminal investigations. It sets timelines for investigation, trials and judgments. Citizen-centric measures ensure prompt access to the first information report and digital updates on investigations. Summary trials are mandatory for minor offences and electronic means like video conferences may be used for examining accused persons. Sir, so the BNS stipulates the information about the arrest of a woman must be provided to her relatives, friends or designated individuals. Sir. It sets the time frames for the completion of investigations with provisions for extension under certain circumstances. Sir. Sir, the Sahita provides for an acceptance of trials, electronic mode of mode as provided in the clause 532, wherein all trials inquire are, and proceedings may be held in electronic mode, sir. Sir, I'll, I'll be like concluding very shortly, sir. Sir, as one of the as one enters the magnificent building of the Supreme Court of India, one is greeted by the following Sanskrit phrase inscribed on its logo: Yato, dhar, yato dharmasto jay, literally translated. Where there is dharam, there will be victory. This phrase occurs 11 times in the Mahabharata. This underlying idea conveyed is obviously the ultimate victory is that of dharma. Dharma should be preserved and those who preserve and protect dharma shall be protected in return. Dharmo rakshit rakshat. India as a society and its various political, social, economic and constitutional bodies have always pivoted on being enablers of dharam. The three sahitas have been drafted with the intent of being dharam sangat as well as being nyay sangat. With the passing and implementation of these three truly Bharatiya codes, our criminal justice system shall truly transform from being victim-centric and justice-centric. I shall move ahead from one presently restricted to implementation of laws and becoming qualified with attributes of Bhartiya Nagarik Suraksha, Nyay, and lead, it will lead to the way for the real Swaraj. For the first time in the last 75 years, the leadership of our Honorable Prime Minister has ensured that we move from India to Bharat and penal to Nyay. Bhartiya Hone Ka Garv, Sanskriti Pehchanne Ka Gaurav, Samajik Vyavastha Ka Gaurav, Nyay Parth Nitiyo Ka Gaurav, Vis विकसित भारत का गौरव और विश्व गुरु बनने का गौरव हमें इन पिछले 9 साल में सरकार के अंदर मिला है सर टुवर्ड्स द एंड आई जस्ट वांट टू थैंक द ऑनरेबल प्राइम मिनिस्टर एंड द ऑनरेबल होम मिनिस्टर फॉर इंडोइंग 
the responsibility and the opportunity upon us members to discuss and pass this historical bill. Sir, it is rather sad that few of our colleagues who could have been participated positively in this debate chose not to. To, to them, I wish to tell a quote by Badr Bashir. Nay door ke nay khwab hain. Nay mausumo ke gulab hain. Ye mohabato ke charag hain. Inhe nafratoon ki hawa na do.